And thank you so much for such a generous introduction, Amrita. It is my pleasure to be here. And I really um, am amazed at the amount of wonderful heritage work that Khaki uh, Tours is doing. The next time I am in uh, Bombay, I'll definitely make it a point to do the tours with you. Um, so uh, my book, uh, Dek to Dastar Khan, is actually a journey that I had started uh, with uh, on my own, actually, because I, when I moved back to Rampur, which, uh, which is a place that my mother hailed from and a place where my husband's family hails from. So it was um, like coming back to my roots to uh, a little town. It is a small town in the heart of UP, about 200 kilometers from Delhi. And as Amrita said, it was a princely state and it survived 1857. The background is that uh, because it decided that it was too insignificant and maybe it did not have much of faith in the rebellion of 1857, it decided to support the British and support itself basically, which made it the only surviving uh, Muslim princely, princely state in, in that uh, region. Uh, so after the fall of the Mughal uh, dynasty and the fall of Awadh, the artists, the poets, and the writers, and, and most importantly for us, the Khan Samas um, decided to come to the closest place where they could get some support, and which was Rampur, and the Nawabs of Rampur supported all forms of art. So that became, that was the beginning of a certain amalgamation of um, arts, of poetry, of different, uh, for instance, uh, Mirza Ghalib was supported by Rampur. Dag Delvi lived in Rampur for several years. And the Khan Samas from Awadh and from, uh, from Delhi, from all the other places came to Rampur and they were encouraged to develop a cuisine that would be distinctly uh, Pathan in the sense that it should it catered to the taste buds of the Pathans. Now, who are the Pathans? They were, uh, they were from a place uh, called Ruh and uh, Swat and Bajor in um, uh, on the Afghanistan and Pakistan border, and they were tribals who had settled in the north of India. Their idea of a cuisine had to be very very uh, strong flavors and very basic. And that's how the Rampur cuisine evolved. And we have the next slide, please. So uh, my journey into uh, finding out about this cuisine was, did not begin with being a, a journey of food because I was, as like I said, I was an indifferent uh, cook. I had, I, I felt that I didn't care so much about the food or maybe it was just uh, something that if you live in a, in a Rampur family, you can't avoid good food, I guess. So as I was just looking, uh, there, there is a Raza library in Rampur, which became the repository of, of manuscripts and paintings after 1857 specifically. And so I was uh, reading up on Rampur cuisine, uh, or not just on Rampur cuisine, but the general culture of Rampur. And then over there, I just chanced upon the, and there were several volumes of these cookbooks. And so I started, uh, you know, trying to decipher. I, I had no Persian, so I was trying to decipher what uh, what it meant. Uh, I was amazed that there was this vast number of pulaos and kormas and kebabs and all of that that I hadn't heard about. And that's how I began my research. Uh, I started uh, learning Persian and started translating them. I was an amateur at best, but as I started uh, delving deeper into this whole um, 
idea of cookbooks, the several questions came up. Uh, what was, uh, when did the Nawab start writing these cookbooks? Why did they start writing these cookbooks? And why in Persian, which was definitely not the language of the average uh, Rampur people and definitely not the language of the cooks. Because earlier uh, the uh, people of Rampur spoke Pashto and then they spoke Urdu and there were several writings in Urdu, but not in Persian. So um, all these questions became a part of my research. And I realized that the, uh, the, the cookbooks that are found today at the Rampur Raza Library were actually collected, some were commissioned, just as we buy cookbooks to um, you know, experiment. In the same way, uh, these cookbooks were um, collected by the Nawabs because they wanted a sort of a frame of reference to the different uh, dishes and probably they wanted, uh, now I was just imagining a lot of things. Maybe these uh, cookbooks were referred to by the noblemen who were in charge of the kitchens. Maybe they were translated. Maybe the Khan Samas were called and told about these various dishes and they tried to replicate them. Uh, I also had found that some of the cookbooks were actually commissioned by the Nawabs. And so they reflected more the, the things that Rampur kitchens, the Royal Rampur kitchens actually cooked. And so there was a distinction. Plus the collections from Hyderabad, from Awad, from, from on Mughal cuisine, etc., etc. All these collections were there. Now my question was that after translation, where do I go from here? I tried inexpertly to start cooking some of, of these dishes, but there were several problems because um, the language, of course I could translate the language literally, but the cues are very cryptic. The terminology of cooking had completely changed. So for example, when they're cooking a pulao, they would say that uh, uh, remove the meat from the shorva and put the yakni into the rice. And so I was totally confused what is shorva and what is yakni. And there was so much of interchanging of digs and you know implements and so many procedures and sub procedures. So they presuppose that you know I uh, the reader would know what was going on, but. The modern reader had no idea that uh, the pulao could be cooked like this as well. Cooking techniques quite a bit. So um, with these, and the other thing was of measurements at all, just the ingredients of uh, the different uh, spices to add. Some cookbooks did have measurements, but the measurements were in dam, tola, masha, chatak. And then we had, I had to understand what was all of that. Some had symbols for dam, tola, chatak, etc., etc. So these were the different problems that I had. And one point of time, I was just uh, sitting over there and I had a lot of... Uh, 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 a lot of spices and I realized that it just couldn't go into the pulao. So, so these, these were the various problems that I was facing. Um, can I have the next slide please? The manuscript collection actually was an attempt at textualizing the cuisine of Rampur. That is, you know, uh, the Nawabs of Rampur, you can see the Nawab Saeed Ahmed Khan, the Nawab Yusuf Ahmed Khan, and Nawab Kalbe Ali Khan. These were the three Nawabs who were actively involved in uh, trying to write down the exact recipes and took the help of the Kanoziers and possibly the Khan Samas to actually uh, write it down. Uh, because they were preserving, they were, they were trying to preserve what they were creating for posterity. And, and this effort was really amazing. At the same time, this is from 1816 onwards, we have these, uh, you know, continuous uh, collections of, of cookbooks that, that are found in the Raza library because the Nawabs had this library 
since the time they settled in Rampur in 1774. And they were adding to this library continuously. So cookbooks became an important segment of that collection. What we see that after Nawab uh, Kalbe Ali Khan, there was, there was no writing of cookbooks. The reason being that there was a secrecy to the Rampur cuisine. So after that, Nawab Hamid Ali Khan, who was supposed to have an amazing, uh, you know, he, he used to host these amazing banquets that uh, people have written about with 200 dishes that were displayed over there. And he had more than a hundred cooks. Uh, and there was the, the Rampur kitchens had a, a sweet meat kitchen, it had a rice kitchen, and it had an uh, Angrezi kitchen, uh, which, which, uh, which, we, which we still find there in Rampur. But there was no writing at that time. The reason being that the Nawab wanted to have all the knowledge to himself and to exercise a sort of a gastro diplomacy that, okay, this is Rampur cuisine and I'm the owner of Rampur cuisine. So that if a Khan Sama was called uh, about this dish, he would just say that, oh, it was the Nawab who told me how to make this dish. So <laughs> that is also part of oral history. That the Nawab, everything, the, all the knowledge of the cuisine belonged to the Nawab. And the Khan Samas also following suit did not want to divulge their secrets. So after Nawab Kalbeli Khan is the era of not of kind of uh, consolidating the knowledge and making it a secret and which became the reason why this cuisine actually was forgotten. Can I have the next slide please? So here you see, uh, I've just given uh, a little snapshot of the contents of one of the um, cookbooks. And uh, you can see that there, there were so many different, uh, um, uh, different dishes that were prepared. For, in uh, for instance, there was uh, Pulao Shah Jahani, Pulao Imli, Korma, uh, different styles of kormas, different styles of kebabs, different styles of sweetmeats that we have not even heard about and achars and chutneys. So many achars and chutneys lapped in, in, in Rampur. So uh, th this was the repertoire of near, we definitely know that nearly 200 dishes were cooked uh, at the beginning of the 20th century. We know that the Nawab Hamid Ali Khan uh, insisted that his guests should uh, partake of at least a teaspoon of each of these dishes, uh, which, um, which made one of the guests really ill because he, he nearly died. He says that it was, it was the Dawat that nearly killed him and the doctor had to be summoned. And this incident is there in one of the memoirs of uh, Princess Merun Nisa. Um, so so these, these were uh, interesting little stories and tales that I came across while researching. Uh, the next slide, please. Now, I was looking at the historical works which mentioned the cuisine. Um, Looking at, for instance, there was this memoir called Remembrance of Days Pass. And uh, this is Jahara Habibullah, who was the uh, sister-in-law of Nawab Raza Ali Khan, who was the last Nawab. And in this, this is one book that mentions uh, the, the various dishes that were still being cooked um, during, uh, up till the 1960s, they were being cooked. I spoke to her daughter, that is uh, Muniza Shamsi, who is also a writer and the mother of Kamala Shamsi. I, I'm sure we've heard about Kamala Shamsi. So um, she was telling me some of the dishes that, that they had um, at the royal tables and which were being cooked in, in their own kitchens. But sadly, most of these dishes are there no more. So I was trying to collect this uh, oral history, the written history, 
also if you can see the cookbook uh, which was shared to us um, because you see in the 1960s the the women of rampur who had uh, these old khansama started realizing that you know we have to preserve some of the dishes for ourselves and teach the next khansama i don't think the most of these women had a lot of help so uh, we also came across some uh, cookbooks in which for instance this this cook uh, this uh, this lady had written about an annas pulao which uh, is a forgotten dish now nobody knows what is an annas pulao but we try to recreate it so uh, this was my research when i was uh, reading and i was writing down the different uh, references can i have the other slide please so um the other part of it was collecting the oral histories and uh, the emotional memory so uh, i started uh, visiting the royal family members of the royal family um a number of them i already knew and i started talking to them about food and uh, what were the dishes that that they used to eat uh, and and the description of the dishes because one thing when i read the uh, manuscript was that there was no description of the dish i had no idea how this dish would look like once it was cooked right so they uh, were very kind for uh, uh, and some of these dishes which were developed in the 19th century were not even mentioned in the manuscripts because remember they stopped writing and so a number of dishes were developed after these uh, cookbook manuscripts had been written and uh, they were for instance there was a dam turti which was a quail which was a, a quail pulao basically a whole quail in a pulao so how was it cooked or what did it look like uh these were the various things that uh, we talked about from the royal family i also spoke to the old khansamas now khansamas are the cooks they are the traditional cooks um so um they also had uh, now the, the thing about the cooks is that most of them were un, unlettered so they did not write down anything so they passed down the 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 knowledge most of the knowledge and some of it they carried with them to their grave because everyone wanted this kind of a, a an importance even after they were no more so these khansamas their their uh, offsprings and their shagird or their pupils also had some idea and had also heard these grand stories of of the rampur cuisine and so this the, the emotional memories around rampur cuisine and how uh, what was you know they, they had heard uh, different incidents uh, where uh, what the nawab ate and uh, how he felt about something for instance khichdi now khichdi is such a, a, a small simple dish but the nawabs enjoyed this khichdi and so uh, so there was this uh, memory of the nawab rewarding one of the khan samas for cooking a perfect khichdi and the reason he uh, well, he loved that khichdi so much that he sent that khan samas three sons to uh, aligarh muslim in with him and learn cooking so so that's how you know the fate of people were changed just because they had uh, the the khansama had cooked the perfect khichdi so these were very interesting uh, oral histories and emotional memories that i started collecting uh when i went around talking to people so when i spoke to people i realized that a lot of these dishes had actually not been cooked or maybe they had been but uh but people had forgotten about it but the main development in the rampur cuisine came in the 20th century can i have the next slide please so uh, my next uh, the next thing started writing 
about this i started writing uh, writing in uh, newspapers and uh, online magazines i wrote in journals like uh, eaton magazine and uh, some of these writings uh, were very widely read and and they people started uh, to ask me questions about Rampur cuisine. And um, as, as a new writer, I was just writing from the heart. Articles I have also put into my book, Dek to Dastar Khan. More of um, food history. I wrote food about food history, about my own memories of foods, about emotions around food. So my idea was writing about food in an emotional way in a historical way as well, because it always interested me, what was the history of this dish? Where did it originate or how did it evolve? So, uh, of uh, Professor Siobhan Lambert Hurley. Uh, can I have the next slide, please? So uh, some of these writings actually caught the attention of uh, Siobhan Lambert Hurley at the University of Sheffield. And uh, we connected and we started talking about the cuisine and I spoke to her about um, uh, the, the different aspects of, of the cuisine and how it had been forgotten. And so we uh, got together a, a project called Forgotten Food, Culinary Memory, Local Heritage and Lost Agricultural Varieties in India, which is an Arts and Humanities Research Council funded project. We started it in 2019 and it is still running, which is why I am in Sheffield currently as a research fellow at the University of Sheffield. Out of impetus to my work, because it was impossible for me to carry forward this whole, um, what I had set out to do, this revival of the cuisine. I didn't have enough resources to cook so much or to get together so much of this cuisine or to project the cuisine. That was, that was basic, my basic idea. The next slide, please. So the idea was to revive the cuisine. Um, which kind of became a mission for me because, um, not because I am I'm a foodie or a food writer initially, at least not initially, I was not a food writer, um, but it was something that was very close to my heart. That aspect of Rampur culture should, and people are, are very interested in cuisines was another thing that I realized. So, so I started translating, the manuscripts, analyzing the manuscripts, other uh, historical material on food, also some health drinks, etc. cetera, uh, collection of oral histories that I've spoken about. And finally, just getting it all together through the Khan Samas of Rampur, because it didn't make any sense till I had actually recreated and reimagined the different recipes. So cooking the books, that was the basic idea that whatever the recipes are there in the books, may I have the next slide, please? Whatever the, the recipes are there in the books, let us try to recreate and reimagine them because uh, the taste the taste of the people has have changed. Uh, earlier, there was a lot of ghee and most of the food was cooked in either ghee or makhan. And today we are very health conscious. So we needed to do a little bit of juggling over there. There were too many, too much of spices, not many. I was really surprised. I thought there would be some amazing ingredients which, which I don't find, which we can't find anymore. But it wasn't like that. Most of the ingredients that were there in the cookbooks, we still use those ingredients. The methodology was definitely very different. And at the same time, the method methodology was a little bit impractical too. So I had to get together with the cooks of Rampur and try to understand how to best 
uh, redo the recipes without compromising on the taste. Now, these khansamas of Rampur are uh, most of them extremely fragile in their uh, fragile in the sense that they are they have a, a very a difficult time. They live from one. Um, catering or one event that they have been called to to another and then there are lean periods and then COVID happened and they, they were in a very, very bad state. So I'm so happy that with the project, we were also able to support them and help them. So this this became another part of, of my quest with the help of the project, how to help them to expand their repertoire because they had also forgotten these recipes. They had heard about a number of these recipes, but it was something that that was uh, uh, that they had just heard about and there was they felt that there was no demand for, let us say, Adra Khalwa, who would have Adra Khalwa anyway. But they, they did not know that there are a lot of people who love uh, eating something different. Uh, yes, they were creating several things, like they were creating something like Nirshka Halwa, Haldi Halwa, uh, to excite the palate of the people, um, but uh, they felt that there was very less demand for these. The next slide, please. So here we have uh, one of, of the Khan um, Samas of Rampur, who was a very, very, uh, who was probably the last uh, of the royal Khan Samas, that is uh, Majid Bhai, and uh, he is making uh, ran kebab which was a speciality of Rampur. Um, Ran kebab has the, the, the lamb, actually it's filled with mince meat and then it is skewered over, over coals. Uh, I did not know about it. Now this was something that he knew and he had been cook, cooking this. So we tried to make him do it again. And then we also put it uh, into, into uh, the festivals that, that we had later. So Majid Bhai was another person who gave us a lot of idea about Rampur cuisine because he was uh, trained by the last, his father was uh, one of the last Khan Samas of, um, of the, the princely era. And he worked for uh, Nawab Murta, Murtaza Ali Khan, that is Nawab Raza Ali Khan's son, and then his daughter till he started, he took a retirement. So um, he also taught us a lot of these things. So basically what we were doing was the knowledge of the Khan Samas, what we got from the cookbooks. There was one cookbook written in the 1950s by a, a Khan Samas that, uh, that was called Shahi Dastar Khan. So I got some recipes from there as well. And then we decided we zeroed in on a few recipes and we tried to reimagine and recreate these recipes. Uh, the next slide, please. So uh, we were dishing out recipes, uh, mainly uh, Chef Surur and Aslam Khan Sama were two Khan Samas which, uh, who were part of this project, but we were reaching out to the others also. The other idea was to train the local Khan Samas in these new uh, reimagined dishes and uh, to tell them, uh, to help them, you know, build up their repertoire. That, that was the basic idea, how they would uh, be more employable and uh, they would have something new to offer to the market, not just in Rampur, because Rampur is a very small place, but around Rampur maybe, and uh, you know, help them build up a sort of a menu for the festivals. Um, I also wrote, um, I, I'm in the process of writing another cookbook of the forgotten recipes which we have recreated. A sort of a pamphlet which would feature these Khan Samas with their phone numbers, with their menus, with how to reach out to them uh, and how to get a catering from the Khan Samas and what was what was the the, the great thing the great dishes that they were cooking what were the new things that they were cooking which uh, it see everybody has different styles of korma and pulao and biryani and kebabs and seek kebabs etc cetera, etc cetera. so uh, they had to have something that was different 
uh yes there were a lot of also uh, the veg for the vegetarians also so they were for instance uh, when when we started talking about uh, the vegetarian side of the cuisine because basically rampur cuisine is a very very meat heavy cuisine but there were always some vegetarian um, uh, dishes also in rampur cuisine and some vegetarian dishes had been evolved because remember uh, at, at that time Uh, during the time of the nawabs also there were vegetarians whom the they had to cater to for instance there was imli pulao now you can't imagine there was uh, an imli pulao or a bangan pulao so so they had all these things there was borani which had uh, which had the he curds and and bangan and tomato in it so they had evolved then there there is a dal called shah shah pasand dal which is actually white urad dal which is cooked in a dry way so uh, so we were looking at all kinds all segments of people and also developing new things we uh, for example you have this uh, egg uh, curry uh, we all know what an egg curry is uh, but they made this egg curry out of paneer also so so the eggs are, are created out of paneer for instance so uh, so uh, we we try to develop various dishes for everyone then um, i started curating uh, a series of article on articles on scroll where i invited a number of writers to write for example rana safi uh, sada fosen muniza shamsi muniza hashmi a number of uh, writers from all over india and abroad uh, they started writing about south asian cuisine on in that articles series of articles and uh, currently we are trying to get them together into a for- forgotten foods the cuisine of muslim south uh, asia uh, that that's an anthology we are going to publish next another anthology called desi delicacies has already been published which was also a part of the project so all this was basically recreating projecting this cuisine and projecting the work of forgotten foods to the people uh, creating an awareness creating a demand i i would also call a sort of a demand demand creation and uh, the the beneficiary of this had to be the khan samas that also became a part a very important significant part of my work the next slide please Uh, another uh, important thing was growing of heritage rice so um, you see every area in india had these various we had nearly more than 2 lakh heritage rice varieties in india but with the coming in of the hybrids uh, the uh, the heritage rice varieties which are highly aromatic rice varieties were totally lost the same thing happened to this rampur belt there was there were heritage rice varieties which were highly aromatic but the yield was much lesser and the time was the time of sowing and reaping was was really too much and you could have two crops of of the five them uh, this is uh, mr brain sandhu and uh, we revived uh, a small grain aromatic rice called tilak chandan which we used to uh, use to make the khichdi in rampur it is a small grain rice and it's highly aromatic and then there was hansraj which was used for pulao so we grew these we found the seeds of uh, tilak chandan and hansraj varieties and we grew them at the at the farms in rampur for three consecutive years there was a there were a lot of problems of course the yield was really a fraction of the yield of but then we had decided that we will try to promote it but it interestingly the people of rampur are still really uh, they really want this rice because there there is so, because this rice was around till the 1990s till till the uh, yeah till beginning of 1990 we we used to have these rices and um, though my my grandparents had come to aligarh but uh, every year they made sure that this rice was brought to aligarh from rampur and the khichdi was made from tilak chandan only and the pulao had to be made from hansraj there was no other way 
And the minute you cook this rice, whether it's the Lakshmi or Hans Raj, the whole house is actually uh, has the smell of rice, and that that's something that's never there in hybrid rice. The funny thing is that even I had totally forgotten about these rices. When we uh, harvested tilak chandan and we cooked the khichdi, the whole house was smelling of of that that wonderful aroma, and I realized that what I had missed out on. So um, there was so there is a lot of demand for these rices, but unfortunately, it it is more than five times. If if you look at the uh, commercial commercial viability of this rice. the cost is more than five times of producing hybrid rice and so well something has to be done uh, in the labs and we are planning to do that next uh, with the rices well uh, can i have the next slide please so yeah i can go on and on about rice it <laughs> it's something that i thought i was totally indifferent to but i am definitely not rice is very important part of the story so um as far as translating and teaching the khansamas uh, we had to then showcase all these recipes so about 25 of these old recreated reimagined old and new recipes were um, showcased at a jashne rampur at iic delhi in october uh, in last year in october we had a day long festival where we we talked about food we had different food writers you can see pushpesh panji and they ran us up free and a number of food writers uh, anuti vishal a number of these food writers uh, came and we discussed food we talked about food and they and then we had a dinner there were roughly 500 attendees to this day long event it was hugely successful and uh, we were able to also host about 200 people to this dinner where we presented 25 of these recreated recipes and they were widely appreciated uh, aslam khan sama from rampur whom we had trained and who had uh, you know also contributed to this whole uh, project uh, came with his team and we were able to serve these dishes they were um, very highly recognized and i think aslam khan sama also got another um, visibility let's say the visibility was there he got another catering at iic also so that was the idea of projecting the cuisine as well as helping the khan samas our next stop was can we have the next uh, slide please we had the riwayat food festival at jahanuma palace in bhopal now here you see the team of uh, our khan samas and uh, and the khan samas of of bhopal the idea is also to uh, to teach the other khan samas how to cook this cuisine so uh, the rampur khan samas were training the khan samas at jahanuma bhopal uh, and trying to fit in the rampuri food uh into the into their menu uh, which i think was was a great success it was a 3 day long festival and it was it was really really amazing because every day we had to have at least 15 16 new dishes um and it it all depended on the innovation of the khan samas we had actually translated and, and redone about 35 and of course we we could repeat one or uh, a few dishes there had to be snacks there had to be the main course there had to be more and more sweet meats so we were this this was a real challenge for uh, aslam khan samas for for his team and also for me because um, we had to present something new all all the time we had to uh, for for instance uh, we had the seek kebabs there were nargisi seek kebabs which which had which also had the egg roll with them there was um, the adrak halwa uh, there were uh, the ran kebab there were chap so so many things that were there which the people hadn't heard about uh, there was kabuli pulao for the vegetarians there were alu katlis and different styles of uh, paneer uh pasande was was another thing uh some of these dishes of course were common 
uh, that is for instance, korma is, everyone knows what korma is, um, but the Rampuri korma would be different from Avdi korma. In, in taste, completely different. Then there was Rampuri stew, which was really, really appreciated by, by everyone. And so we, we taught these uh, Jahanuma uh, cooks the Rampuri stew. Uh, and it has become a part of Jahanuma uh, Palace uh, menu. So this was, this was our second uh, food festival. And I think it was even more successful than the first one. Can I have the next slide, please? Now, I would like to really uh, talk about some of these dishes that, what were these dishes? How did we reimagine them or how did we recreate them? Some of these dishes like, like you have the, uh, uh, we have read, that is I have read in, in the memoirs that uh, there was a dish where there was a two foot long fish and this was called Uruse, Kebab Uruse Bahari. Uh, and this, the fish was created in a way that it looked like a real live fish. It wasn't a fish. It was actually made of, of the, the fish, uh, steamed fish and recreated like that. And it also had eyes and, you know, the presentation was, was a very, very important thing. You can see over here, this is the dining hall at, at the palace of Rampur. This is a very old picture, 1911. So, uh, so the presentation was an art at that time, uh, which is unfortunately forgotten. So, so we, uh, we couldn't recreate that really. Um, there was this uh, an, uh, pineapple pulao, there was uh, uh, motia pulao, where you could see that you know, the rice looked like pearls. It was presented in a way that it looked like was in an ananas pulao. There was that's a pineapple pulao. There was a whole pineapple that was created from sugar. I don't know how it was created from sugar. There was a pomegranate pulao where the, uh, it had uh, uh, the rice looked like pomegranate seeds. The, it was made into pomegranate seeds. So we just know some descriptions of this and uh, we can only imagine, we, we cannot really recreate this. But however, some of these dishes we have uh, recreated and tried to make it easier to cook. If I could cook it, I think people, can, anyone can cook it. <laughs> so for instance, there was this Adra Khalwa. Can I have the next? Uh, yes. So adrak halwa is made of uh, ginger, uh, that is new ginger. When the new ginger comes in sometime in September and October, it's the beginning of winters. And adrak, as you know, has a lot of medicinal properties. I remember this adrak halwa used to be there when we were kids. And uh, uh, I remember my grandfather used to have a little bit every morning because it used to uh, keep away the cold. Uh, but I haven't seen it for years. So I, uh, Muniza uh, Shamsi actually gave us a recipe. Then I got some recipes from the Khan Samas also and uh, tried to get it all together and make it into an Adrak Halwa. People had very different reactions to the Adrak Halwa. Some people absolutely loved it. We also presented it at Delhi and uh, at Bhopal as well. Some people said that it tasted like medicine and they could never have it ever again. So, <laughs> but I, I really liked it. I could cook it and I think that makes it very cookable. So Adrak Halwa was one of the things. Uh, under Halwa, a lot of people, Adrak Halwa has this interesting story and it was said that uh, one of the Nawabs had uh, joined, now this is oral history, I have not uh, seen it written anywhere, that one of the Nawabs had uh, joint pain and he was asked to eat adrak, ginger, and he, he just hated ginger. So the Khan Samas were called secretly and they were asked to create something out of adrak and that's how adrak halwa was created. I have not heard of Adra Kalwa anywhere else. So there is a plausibility to that story. Maybe it is, it is true after all. It, is, it was created in Rampur. And so um, again, uh, it, you, you do find Adra Kalwa in Rampur, but now the, the, it is not really Adra Kalwa in the sense that 
what they have done is that they have added uh, some adrak to normal halwa sohan which is which is a, a speciality of of rampur and then they pass it off as adrak halwa however uh, adrak halwa was created under this project and i think it was quite successful there was turmeric halwa as well which did pretty well as well so um, can we have the next slide please another interesting uh, dish was the do goshta pulao now um, do goshta pulao i had once again it was a part of oral history uh, it what the idea was that it was supposed to have two meats that it it had uh, chicken uh, meat as well as mutton so um, just based on listening to the khansamas we recreated it and one of the khansamas told me that the idea was that the pieces of mutton had to be encased by the chicken mince so that when you cut these meat balls inside you will find mutton so so the meat balls are a part of of the pulao they would be found in the pulao and when you ate it it would have the mutton piece inside it was really delicious it was really something unique uh, and that it is i i would say it is truly rampuri because i have not really uh, heard or seen any do goshta pulao anywhere the idea of having two kinds of meat was very interesting so we had this kundan kaliya in again a very rampuri dish again a forgotten dish but which people remember it and again the kundan kaliya had a, do, a, two types of meat on in a very light curry kundan means it had to have a golden hue it had turmeric and it had saffron very light uh curry but it had both the meats in it uh the maybe the the basic idea is to have both the taste of both kinds of meat in in the curry so that was the kundan kaliya there was ratan kaliya uh, even probably even even lighter but uh, as far as kaliya kaliya basically i'm just saying kaliya i hope uh, i'm sure a lot of people haven't heard of what is kaliya kaliya is a gravy which has turmeric so korma doesn't have turmeric kaliya would have turmeric it it is a curry with turmeric and you can have you can add uh, different uh, vegetables to it so one of the curries that we uh, recre recreated uh, uh, had a number of vegetables in it uh, and it also had the stock of vegetables in the curry so that that was another kind of kaliya that was uh, recreated by us there was kebab tarz bazar which is like a sikh kebab uh, which were uh, which we found one of the recipes there was kaliya kaliya malgoba uh, that had a mishmash of of different vegetables in the curry and there was one thing that was so funny uh, one day while we were at um, uh, bhopal and we were trying to find uh, something new then i suddenly remember my mother my grandmother used to say oh what have you made made it is diwani handia so i used to ask what is diwani handia the diwani handia is some it is like a mad dish like you just put everything into it so <laughs> we made that diwani handia at bhopal and it everybody just loved it Uh, it had uh, it was a meat curry which had uh, which had potatoes and it had milk and it had uh, uh, it it had turnips uh, it it had uh, green chilies so we just put everything into it and that was diwani handia and it, it was a huge hit uh, then then we also recreated shabdeg now shabdeg is a is a uh, basically an avadhi dish shab means night and deg is of course the the day uh, so it is cooked all night uh, but i had read in one of the cookbooks that the rampuri shab deg is is really exclusive and i got this recipe of uh, rampuri shab deg from this this cookbook written by a khan sama in 1950 that i spoke about that is shahid dastar khan and we made this um, rampuri shabdeg again it was it was really a, a huge hit it had uh, totally different 
style of uh, cooking and the taste was really amazing so those are, i think everybody should be ready for dinner by the time i end this talk <laughs> um the next slide please i have been talking so much about this ananas pulao i think that's because i i love pineapple it's a pine, it's a the uh, rampur because it's a rice producing area people love sweet rice so we have safeda that is sweet rice white sweet rice we have mutanjan mutanjan is also a very interesting uh, sweet rice where in you it is sweet at the same time it's salty it has meat as well as sweet so so there are meat balls but these meat balls are dipped uh, in sugar syrup so that you would think that that these are gulab jamuns but actually they are not gulab jamuns they are meat balls dipped in in sugar syrup uh, so uh, that is mutanjan again one of the dishes that we have created um, the ananas pulao is a sweet pulao with uh, pineapple pieces of pineapple but i was told by one of the people who have had this ananas pulao that uh, the ananas or the the pieces of pineapple were as tiny as the rice so that when you looked at it you couldn't make out which was rice and which was a piece of pineapple but that would make it really really tough to cook and our basic idea was to recreate recipes that are easily cooked and that people can you know try to cook in their house to make this cuisine popular so these were a, a few of the the dishes that we tried to revive and recreate and well very soon my after dekh to dastarkhan uh, which which actually has recipes of the food still being cooked in rampur our next cookbook of forgotten recipes um would have these recipes that we have reimagined and recreated so that's that's what the, the next thing that is going to come out is this and i i hope there's an audience for it and i hope that it will help in um reviving this this wonderful forgotten cuisine thank you so much i think now i'm ready for the question and i think most of the people are ready for dinner now <laughs> definitely tarana <laughs> i'm hungry and uh, luckily i've got some drink next to me but yeah <laughs> i'll ask some of the audience questions first and then we had a couple of questions ourselves uh, so let me just get to the audience questions uh, the first one was what are the key differences between lucknowi and rampuri cuisines um yes that that is a very very interesting question you see uh, rampur uh, like i said that uh, it was basically the pathans were tribals and they had this very um, they were simple people the avadi the people of avadi were more refined more genteel so uh, avadi cuisine as well as avadi culture had a strong influence in, in on rampur Uh, but the dishes still retain the basic flavors for instance a kebab for instance the seek kebab in avad or the kakori kebab that we know of it would have nearly 30 spices wow uh, uh, but but in rampur i think we make do with about 7 8 or maybe maximum 10 spices so um, uh, we believe that avdi cuisine is too aromatic mm -hmm. they would use kevda for instance one of the things they would use kevra but uh, in rampur we don't want to use kevra because it kind of dominates the taste hmm. so much hmm. right uh, the same thing i found in bhopal because bhopal is was also a roila pathan state they also like the same it's the same taste palette so it was a matter of zauk or taste uh, rather than anything else uh, so that is the difference uh, right. a, a, avadi would be more aromatic and uh, mogalai would be more uh, even more elaborate thicker curries etc yeah. rampuri would be simpler right thank you and uh, is it true that the rampur khansamas are made halwas using all kinds of ingredients i think you've answered that uh, but if there were any other ingredients um that you think could think of which were more unusual 
Yes, so uh, the Rampuri Khan Samas, I think this is this is uh, something relatively modern. Like you had Mirch Halwa, you had uh, mm. recently there was a Halwa festival in Rampur, which was so interesting. Wow. So there was turmeric halwa, amazing turmeric halwa. I've never had it. Uh, there was Mirch Halwa. We also uh, uh, took all these halwas to Bhopal and people actually enjoyed, loved having that, that kind of something new and amazing. I think people love that. Uh, so there was uh, adrak halwa that I spoke about. Haldi. There was khajur halwa, khobani halwa, mm -hmm. um, also meat halwa, uh, yeah. which uh, yes, <laughs> and you can't make out that it is meat. Uh, even uh, even neem halwa, uh, again you can't make out that there is neem. You would get a little grassy kind of an aftertaste, but you would not know. There is lesson kheer. People mm -hmm. didn't like lesson kheer because. It did have an aftertaste of lesson in it, and yeah. I didn't enjoy it too. But what I'm what I'm trying to see in these attempts is that uh, the Kansamas of Rampur were trying to come out with different innovations because they also wanted to be on the scene of food festivals. They also wanted to project themselves. So these were not really ancient um, halwas or something, except for Adrak halwa or Anda halwa. These were not a part of the Rampuri ancient uh, cuisine, but this was the, eff the efforts of the Khan Samas to create something that was new. Right, right. Um, how would you describe the current Rampuri food and is it similar or now very different from its predecessors? The current Rampuri food because you see, after the downfall of the princely state, after specifically after the 1960s and 70s, uh, there was a, a kind of degradation of the cuisine in the sense that uh, you, uh, because people didn't have so much money, there was unemployment. A lot of people got, uh, of the Khan Samas went off to Pakistan. Uh, a lot of them died also, and they didn't tell their secrets to their, uh, to their offspring or mm -hmm. maybe the offspring took up other professions. So all that happened and there was the forgetting of, forgetting of, the, uh, of the cuisine. So what we have in Rampur, yes, we have the basic dishes, like you have kormas, you have pulaos, you have uh, mita pulao, but uh, it's, it's different from the avadi or the, uh, or the, uh, the Delhi uh, cuisine. But I think the dishes are very similar okay. to what we see. What that is what is left of this cuisine now, right? Right, I think somebody said in Rajasthan they have saunt ka halwa, which is dried ginger, and it's also again oh. uh, eaten early in the morning, um, in the uh, in January and December. I think there are lots of uh cuisines which have these warming foods which are seasonal ginger, yes. those kinds of things. I know even um, I'm a Parsi and I know that even we make things with a lot of spices and ginger and those kinds of things, which is a breakfast thing in the mornings in winter. And I think they said in Maharashtra, even Alubadi is made with Adrak. So, um, oh, so asking um, if we can, if there's anywhere to get these rices, these different, um, you know, the, all the rices that you mentioned, all the varieties, is there any way that you can, anywhere to actually get these? Uh, there, um, I believe that there, there is a farm in, um, you know, in the foothills, but when I got the rice from these farms, uh, they were very expensive, like 400 or 500 rupees a kg, but I sent it to the lab. Hmm. I send it to Debal Deb is is a person who's a uh, who who's looks at at the preservation of heritage rice and he says no it's just uh, you know an odd ten percent of this rice is actually that rice you know so there's a lot of mixing up of the rice just to get that aroma and hmm. I I will not say that that you can find uh, Tilak Chandan or Hans Raj anywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, for Hansraj seeds, we had to go to the Pakistan border. We found it at Pakistan border, but uh, amazing aroma. I had forgotten the aroma totally. Um, right. I'm I'm hoping that at some point of time, the, like the left chandan is the poor man's rice, but it's become so expensive that only the rich can afford it. And now you don't even find it. Mm -hmm. It's impossible to grow it. You know, it, it is just too expensive to grow now. So I'm hoping that uh, with the 
the project taking this forward and doing some hybridization and we can have a hybrid of uh, tilak chandan which can because people love this rice people yeah. we did a survey of uh, tilak chandan khichdi and we had tilak chandan khichdi and the other khichdi and people couldn't distinguish between the two or some like a and some like b we had the same khichdi in sheffield but the minute i did the survey in rampur the first spoon and they said this is tilak chandan so yeah. it's it's like a cultural thing it's like yeah. a cultural thing they love this rice right uh there are a couple of questions are there any kind of rampuri dishes that were influenced by the food that the uh, only the royals had and now is consumed by uh, the locals as well i think uh, what when you when you ask the old people uh, old timers they will say that whatever the common people ate the the royals also ate they loved eating what the common people ate but what they ate what was there at the royal table was forgotten very mm. quickly mm. so so it was not things filtering down from top to bottom but things going from bottom up wow. uh, they enjoyed the the normal uh, mince meat for instance normal keema the birayi mm. or besan roti they they enjoyed uh, khichdi they loved khichdi they loved dahi bada so so there was a sort of settling down of the cuisine so that there is very little difference between the the cuisine of the elite and the cuisine of of the ordinary people in rampur anymore so that that was a settling down but to say that certain things that were had by the royals were were had uh, by the common people was was really very rare oh. it was a very rare thing yeah okay um Uh, can you tell us something about this halwa sohan okay so halwa sohan is is a is a, uh, is a halwa which is made of uh, samnak or wheat germ um uh, atta uh, wheat germ flour uh, and so you sprout the wheat and then you dry it and make the flour and that becomes the main ingredient why why this wheat germ flour because it has the ability of absorbing a lot of ghee so you have 10 times the ghee now uh, halwa sohan actually uh, probably uh, you have halwa uh, some people say sohan halwa but actually halwa sohan is the actual thing it probably had its root in in uh, iran Uh, but it is still cooked in afghanistan and uh, pakistan border it's, an, it's something that is there and from there it has come to rampur and this this uh, area uh, the thing about this dish was uh, there there's a ghanta ghanta wala in in uh, delhi now that shop is closed down he also used to uh, make this but it's it's not there anymore so it's a soft halwa the interesting thing about that halwa was that Uh, when you put your finger on the halwa the ghee would gather around your finger and you took away the finger and the ghee would get absorbed in it because oh. it was made of oh yes wheat germ flour uh, mm-hmm. again a lot of changes happened the the kind of halwa so when we had as as children we don't we don't get it anymore and i tried to you know tell the people who were making halwa so on that this is where you are going wrong because i looked at the old recipes and i realized what they were doing was that uh, in order to make it easier they were using uh, uh, semolina also and mm. that changed the taste uh, so uh, so that was halwa so on and and it is something that that is a, a truly rampuri uh, mm. sweet meat and was there any western influence on the food in rampur yes so so you see uh, because they were entertaining the british officials so there was always a angrezi uh, kitchen angrezi kitchen in rampur which had a which had a separate uh, uh, budget also we have found in in the old historical records because of course they were, but the interesting thing that happened uh, in the last nawab that is nawab raza ali khan in 1930 Uh, he he wa- he loved uh, english food he loved everything english he wanted to dress up like an englishman unlike his predecessors uh, his his uh, daughters were sent to uh, english boarding school british run boarding schools and then they went to college so and his wife stepped out of the parda so uh, uh, things had changed and he wanted to promote this angrezi cuisine it mm-hmm. was already there 
but uh, so so we have jahara abibulla the, the the memoir of jahara abibulla that's the grandmother mother of kamla shamsi and she writes about these uh, angrezi foods um, for instance there were cutlets and mm. there was uh, you know and then i came to uh, <laughs> to shefir and i said do you cutlets here i said my god i thought that this was angrezi khana so mm. what was happening actually was that the nawa uh, the khansamas were uh, creating something in between mm. so and so they were making kebabs and rolling them in bread crumbs and frying it and calling it cutlets uh something that probably started in calcutta and was there here as well then mm. then you had little baskets of uh, fruit cream created uh, out of uh, sugar i don't know the baskets were created out of caramel you know mm. uh, there was there were there were several uh, foods which were um, enjoyed by uh, by the nawabs and his noblemen and the elite families which were called and um, there was this chini sabzi i have mentioned it what is this chini sabzi what why this name just because all the vegetables were in small sizes and they were floating in oh. in something like a broth with meat so it was called chini sabzi you know uh, <laughs> so um, so various dishes were just created uh, by the khansamas which were called the angrezi dishes and the elite thought that they are very healthy dishes and they should be eaten every day and the nawab said you must eat these dishes and so mm. the khansamas even my grandmother uh, grandfather's uh, khansamas was was trained in the english dishes wow. uh, at that time and yeah. and he was put and he hated it he hated the angrezi dishes my nani never ate any angrezi dishes <laughs> <laughs> so so that that was happening um, yeah then <laughs> so there was a influence of the british dishes over there the roasts and the pot roasts and uh, the french toasts and all of that ah okay <laughs> and any ramzan specialties um in rampur we have uh, this very similar specialties like we have kichra and we have uh, keema samosa is one thing that i don't know a lot of uh, they they are keema samosas but in rampur keema samosa is especially during ramzan okay so at the time of iftar i've written about it in my book also at the time of iftar there is a huge lineup for keema samosa that everyone wants to have iftar is the breaking of the fast so it is filled with the uh, samosas filled with mince meat basically okay yes so this ramzan i was there in rampur and we tried out uh, there are now more uh, places earlier there used to be just one place which had the perfect keema samosa and everybody had to be there but now we have more places with keema okay. samosas so we tried out everything excellent <laughs> <laughs> there say is there the couple more questions that are just coming is there any like thali like uh, concept there like you have a maharashtrian thali or a gujarati thali is there like a concept like that no no there, there is no such concept of a thali but yes uh, i would say for uh, certain occasions like a wedding reception uh, there would be a very set menu mm. most of the places like there would be uh, the tar tar korma or tar gosht that is like a, a korma mm -hmm. uh, with the tandoori roti yeah with uh, with a yakhni pulao and meetha uh, pulao yeah. so so and sometimes they add in uh, the seek kebabs also so this would be the set menu for uh, because you are feeding a number of people so right. lots of korma and lots of tandoori yeah. roti for everybody <laughs> that's that's the set menu and um are there any videos of recipes with uh, of these of these recipes that you've mentioned so it's easier for us non cooks to follow <laughs> not really not really i because like i said that i'm not really a cook so um you know uh, we were making these different various recipes with the khan samas but uh, and and you know we're putting them there for the festivals but we've not not really made videos maybe that that is a good idea maybe i should do that once the cookbook yeah. is out I once think we've got this cookbook then we can do that 
yeah i think a youtube channel is in the making <laughs> but there is one uh, documentary on rampur cuisine that we created under this project is called dastar khane rampur uh-huh. uh, maybe you will find it on yes you can find it on youtube and that's it's very interesting Actually, um, because it has to the uh, thing and it says that you can watch it for free between 12th and 14th may online there's a link in the chat if anyone wants to just copy that okay link. great 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 yeah so um i think that's it with the questions but everyone has really enjoyed that talk and we're all going to go straight for dinner now i think <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for your patience and for my listening to my ramblings no no it was so interesting really you know everyone and you know everyone is into food and uh, you know get knowing the history is really so wonderful to know and just makes it more interesting when you uh, you know go to a place like rampur and then you have the background so it's really nice thank you very very much for joining us today and uh, we hope we have many more talks with you i certainly hope so thank you so much for having me with you <laughs>